Yo, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to another video for Dying Light 2. And today, I want to talk about weapons. The world of Dying Light 2 is vast, and there are tons of things to keep you busy, and plenty of items, weapons, and gear to collect. Some items are a little more random, meanwhile others have set locations. And with that in mind, today I want to put together a list of four awesome weapons that you definitely want to keep your eyes out for, not only because they're, I mean, pretty damn cool, but also because they pack a punch too. So, they'll help you with your quest to thin the infected population. So if you guys do enjoy this video, then a like would be super appreciated. Be sure to comment down below and let us know if you've encountered any of these weapons yourself or if you have any others you think are worth mentioning. This list also includes my personal favorite weapon, so definitely make sure you stick around for that one because it makes you feel like an absolute badass. I also wanna give a massive shout out to Nvidia for very kindly sponsoring this video. I've been playing and recording Dying Light 2 on this Acer Predator Triton 500 SE gaming laptop, allowing me to take full advantage of Nvidia's ray tracing and DLSS features, but I'll speak more about that later in the video. First we have weapons to show. Kicking things off at number one, we have the Motorhead, which is an incredible two-handed mace, great for dishing out meaty destruction right to the infected's jaw side. It has very high durability and damage, so much so that we found during our time playing the game, it could go as far as to one-shot infected even in level five to six zones. The perks that roll on this are random though, so yours could look a little different, but regardless, this is a solid weapon that you should not sleep on. If you want to grab this for yourself, then head down to the lower dam Aya area in Central Loop. Located in the bottom right hand corner of the map, it's actually a reward for clearing the Heron Renegados camp. This item is a set reward and is always the highest level at level 6, an artifact rarity, plus as a bonus, when you clear the camp, you also get this sweet winter jacket. Then moving on from there to the next one, in at number two, we have the crossbow, quite possibly one of the most overpowered weapons in the game. This is a semi-automatic firing crossbow that uses bolts that you craft, and it can even use different elemental bolt types too. As a tip, impact bolts are our personal favorite since it sends enemies flying. And if you want to obtain this, you can actually get this as a reward for the fourth Peacekeeper perk when assigning facilities in the open world zone. So make sure you do that if you want this absolute monster of a weapon. Now, moving on from there, if you've been enjoying the Dying Light 2 content we've been making so far, then some of what you've been watching has actually been recorded using this Acer Predator Triton 500 SE gaming laptop. While it's busy gaming season right now, and let's be honest, nobody's really going anywhere other than their desk, the fridge, and the toilet, it is nice to have a powerful machine that is also super slim and portable, so if you do want to take your gaming on the go, you can. The Aeroblade 3D fan technology helps keep the system cool even when running graphically intensive games like Dying Light 2, and you can use the Predator Sense button to easily overclock the system, customize RGB, and much more. Complete with an Intel Core i9-11900H processor, an NVIDIA RTX 3080 GPU, and 32GB of RAM, this machine is plenty powerful enough to run Dying Light 2 and take full advantage of the other NVIDIA features like real-time ray tracing and DLSS, which was added in as part of the Day 1 patch. And that is one of the most impressive things about Dying Light 2's visuals on PC. The real-time ray tracing just makes the world come alive. I'm sure you guys have heard of this before, but broadly speaking, with this turned on, you get increased graphical fidelity and day-to-night lighting through global illumination, higher quality reflections and shadows, all of which results in a much more immersive experience. Using these settings, light bounces around the world realistically, creating far more dramatic scenes. Shadows are also rendered more realistically, interacting with objects in the environment, and reflections also render accurately across different surfaces. It is worth noting though, that if you do intend to use this, then DLSS is also gonna be a must. Dying Light 2 is a beefy game, and DLSS helps boost performance using AI to generate sharp, detailed frames, in turn, allowing you to still appreciate and experience the graphical fidelity without your system them taking a nosedive due to the load being placed on it. On this laptop, I've been running with ray tracing turned on, DLSS set to quality, and most settings on high with a couple of things tweaked here and there to optimize performance. And all in all, it's been a smooth experience. If you want to find out more details, be sure to click the link in the description box down below. But now we have more weapons to hunt. For the last two, there is an element of RNG involved since these are located in green GRE trailers and crates that are spread throughout the map. So let me show you the weapons first, then we'll quickly cover four locations that you can check to help you find them. Number three is the Barbarian. This is the weapon I mentioned at the start, my favorite weapon in the entire game. It is a sword, a literal sword, like a badass Barbarian sword, hence the name. It's a super strong long sword with high durability and sockets so you can mod it. It's really good both for individual enemies, but also dealing with crowds since you can swing it wildly to slice and dice. Again, the perks are random, so yours could look a little different, but it is well worth using. 
And finally, in number four, the final weapon you definitely want to keep an eye out for is the police stick. This is a single-handed weapon with high damage and durability, but being a one-hander means it's really fast hitting, so it's good for the more chaotic playstyles if you want to swing wildly like a madman at your enemies. It also has a ton of sockets for modding potential to make it even more powerful, but again, perks are random. So yours could be better or worse than ours. So if you want to get these two weapons that as mentioned, turn your attention to the GRE containers and crates. Here are some locations to get you started. First one is in the garrison in the central loop on the VNC tower. It's accessible after finishing the story mission here. You simply take the elevator to the roof and you'll find it right on top. Second location again in the garrison in Central Loop, this time at the northeast of the Juniper Windmill. For the third one on the middle north border of the garrison, again in Central Loop. And finally, the fourth location is the New Dawn Park at the Military Convoy. Keep your eyes peeled though, since there are a lot of infected guard in this area. So there you have it. That's a quick look at a few awesome weapons you should definitely check out. Which ones do you like the most and which ones are you going to be adding to your shopping list? If you guys want to catch more Dying Light 2 content, then you can check out this video where we show you how to find the awesome hoverboard easter egg. And of course, keep it locked for plenty more.